Hey folks, Dan Gunther here. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about a science fiction series that recently ended uh, its most recent season. And surprisingly for this channel, it's not Star Trek. I'm talking about The Expanse. This is a show that a lot of my viewers have been asking me to cover. Uh, for quite a few years, and I didn't really get into it until fairly recently. My wife and I, of course, did the usual uh, free trial of Amazon Prime, which included Prime Video. Uh, my wife first did her trial, and, and we checked it out, and I got hooked on the television series uh, The Man in the High Castle, which I really enjoyed, watched, loved. Uh, and then I started watching The Expanse, and of course that uh, free trial expired, and for some time we didn't have Prime, and then I decided to get a free trial to order something quickly or whatever, and then The Expanse popped up again, and I remembered, oh, I kind of got interested in that show. I just watched the first couple episodes, a little slow, but, you know, something I might want to check out again. So I loaded it up and again, rewatched those first few episodes and got back into the series and very quickly found myself really enjoying the depth of storytelling and amazing characters of this show. I've never read the novels. Uh, I would like to at some point. They are definitely on my list. Of course, reading uh, Star Trek novels for the Positively Trek book club and treklet.com takes up a lot of my time, but the Expanse novels are some that I definitely do want to check out sometime. I've heard very good things, and if they're anywhere close to as good as the television show is, and I've heard they're better, uh, that's a huge selling point. So yeah, I, I've really come to enjoy The Expanse. What's really interesting to me about it is that each season seems to be almost a completely different show. You know, it, it has these aspects of the politics of the solar system with the belters and the inner planets and the, you know earth and mars and and all of that politics played out on that arena that really fascinates me i've always loved big expansive uh, political stories like that especially in a science fiction setting i'm on the record as saying the west wing in the Star Trek universe would be a show that I would be all about. I would love to see that. Uh, so that political aspect really appeals to me. On, on another level, of course, the characters, the, the ground level characters that we see aboard the Rocinante, Captain Holden and his crew, as well as a lot of the other secondary characters that have populated this universe throughout the five seasons have all been really fun and really interesting. So season five in particular, I really enjoyed. It's the first season that I watched almost all of it as it came out. I think the third or the fourth episode was out when I was catching up on episodes one, two, and three and finally got caught up and had to wait that week for each new episode to come out. It was a fun experience finally being in sync with the rest of the world with regards to uh, this show. There's a lot going on in season five. I really truly enjoyed it. I think I saw a comment online and I I can't wholly disagree with this. Holden is kind of a stand-in for the every person, almost like the uh, playable character in a video game. And the comment when I read it felt like maybe it was disparaging of his character a little bit. But at the same time, I can't dispute that characterization of him, nor do I feel it's a disparaging characterization, however. I really find that like he's an idealistic person who believes he's always doing the right thing and, you know, has to make some tough choices from time to time. And yeah, I really feel like the viewer is kind of putting themselves on Holden. And I think that's a very effective way for the character to operate in the show. So I, I don't fault that characterization of him at all. And in fact, I think it's a, definitely a, a a good thing about his character and something that I really appreciate. Uh, his better half, of course, Naomi Nagata, incredible character, very well played in this season. Naomi's whole story in this season was a really compelling one with her personal connection to Marcos Anaros and her son, Philip Anaros. I really had a lot of sympathy for her and what she was going through, and especially the last couple episodes where she's trapped aboard the ship that's rigged to explode and trying to save her friends by keeping them from coming near. Uh, really compelling stuff, really interesting stuff. And, and I really have to agree with a lot of people out there that say this is 
some of the best science fiction on television right now. I have been fully converted into a fan of The Expanse. Uh, it's too bad that I came to it a little bit late. I feel like I would have a lot of fun doing like weekly reviews of these episodes as they came out. Uh, I came to season five just a little bit too late to be able to do that, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, maybe for season six, which is supposed to be the final season, uh, I will do something like that. So, um, yeah. Uh, another character who has come a long way and it's really fun watching the entire series in kind of this compressed time frame and seeing the arc of his character is Amos and uh, where he's come from in the early days compared to where he is now. His whole story of kind of being trapped on Earth as it's, you know, undergoing these uh, these emergencies with the asteroids that were uh, directed to it by Marcos Anaros. It's an incredible story, and I love that he teams up with, uh, actually I actually have to look up the name, uh, Clarissa Mao. I, I just think of her as Peaches, because Amos calls her that all season. But um, that was really interesting, you know, initially trapped in the prison, and then uh, having to fight their way uh, out and and to get off the surface of Earth. Really interesting story, and I love how you know, he recognizes that he is lacking empathy and is not a good person, whatever that means in this context. He recognizes that fact. And, you know, I, I think it was uh, Clarissa says something like that doesn't sound like something a good person would do when Amos was talking, you know, very clinically, very um, unemotionally about, you know, killing somebody and taking their resources. He realizes like yeah i need to get back to my crew because he knows the effect they have on him is to make him a better person i just incredible storyline really amazing character i love that you can have so much sympathy for this character given how he acts and his outlook and and but it, it's so well done it's so very well done uh, alex Another character who I, I, I haven't looked into it. I don't know a lot of the specifics, but I know there's some controversy with the actor that plays him, which likely has something to do with why he was, and spoiler alert, uh, killed off at the end of this season. Uh, he's a character I've enjoyed uh, from very early on. I did like his kind of buddy-buddy bit of the show with Bobby throughout this season, so that was interesting. And his return to Mars and his interaction with some of the people there I thought was really fascinating as well. I'd love to see a little bit more kind of exploration of that, but I guess the Mars character, the representative of Mars, will have to be Bobby going forward, which I'm definitely not sad about. Uh, I really like Bobby. I think she's a terrific character ever since her introduction a few seasons back, and she fits in really well. She's kind of got this cynical, kind of wry way of looking at things that I just love. And she's played brilliantly as well. So much of the stuff going on with the Belters this season that I thought was really fascinating. And Marcos Anaros, as the villain, I felt was very effective because, you know, it's he's charismatic. It's easy to kind of buy into what he's saying. And believe that what he's doing is for the good of the belt but if you really look at it he's so narcissistic and so caught up in his own cult of personality uh, that you know when you really analyze it what he's doing is not good for the belt in the long run it's really going to uh, hurt the people that he claims to protect and I, I think he's been fascinating I, th I felt like at the end of last season I was not really on board with Marcos as the big bad and kind of going oh I don't know about this this season though I really enjoyed his character and especially that dynamic as I said with him and Naomi and Philip I thought it was really fascinating that kind of charismatic controlling personality of his and what he sees as a threat I think is an interesting insight into his personality so uh yeah, speaking of the Belters, though, I think one of my favorite characters of the entire series at this point has to be Drummer. I don't know what it is that's just really drawing me to this character. I think she's incredible. There was one of those things on Twitter that was going on. It was, you know, 
show four characters that you absolutely love or something like four fictional characters. And I think I had like Ben Sisko, Saru, uh, Samantha Carter and drummer from <laughs> the expanse, because there's just something about her. I just love her character. I love how tortured she is and how ultimately at the end she takes this principled stand and it costs her. It really does cost her. It's not an easy decision to make, but it's one that she had to make uh, to be able to live with herself. So yeah, I just really, really enjoyed that character. And of course, one of my favorite characters for the whole series has to be Avasarala. I think she was really incredible this season as well. I thought it was interesting how it kind of came full circle. She's now the Secretary General of the UN again. It was fun. I was hoping his character would go in a different direction and be a bit better. I loved seeing the kind of interim secretary general. Uh, and I can't remember the actor's name off the top of my head, but those of you who have watched my Mandalorian reviews know how excited I was to see Paul Sun Hyun Lee in The Mandalorian. He plays a character on Kim's Convenience. Uh, the gentleman that plays the interim secretary general also plays a small character, a, a a minor recurring character on Kim's Convenience. It was really fun to see him in this role. I love uh, just the fact that these shows all film in Canada. I get to see some, you know, famous local, uh, local to C Canadians anyway. It's still really far away from me, but, but, Canadian actors in these prominent roles. So that was a lot of fun. Overall, I know this video has just basically turned into me gushing about uh, The Expanse, but I have to admit, those of you in my audience who were saying, check out The Expanse, it's worth it. I'm glad I finally did because it really is. And I owe you all a great deal of thanks for putting me on to uh, onto the expanse so thank you so much i'm really glad i did get a chance to check it out and i will be keeping my prime membership going in order to watch season six when it comes out um, and in the meantime i won't be canceling it because my wife and i have been watching the golden girls <laughs> yep there's a little insight into uh my life right now so yeah the golden girls been watching that a lot of fun what do you think about the expanse have you been watching it uh if not why did you just watch this video and let me spoil a whole bunch of stuff for you let me know in the comments below i'd love to hear from you thanks of course to the patreon supporters for all of their help as always in bringing these videos to you i truly do appreciate it to everyone else thank you so much for watching uh, like share and subscribe if you felt this video is worth it lots more videos coming in the future uh, but in the meantime as always I can't say live long and prosper. What do they say in the expense? I don't know. I'm at a loss. See you next time.